Cain killed Abel, he was driven away. And where did he go? To the land of Nod, right? Where these reptilians were already there living. This is why people can't answer the question when you say, how was Cain afraid that people are going to kill him in the land of Nod if there were no other people on the planet before that? When the Africans first migrated out of Africa, were there any other species on the planet? Of course. That's why I keep saying you've been coming to Karate for 20 years. It's not a study. It's a way of life. This is what I'm trying to say to people. It's a complete way of life. It's a culture. The group, the name Ramusa is an ancient Egyptian name. And I can identify with that because of uh, the, H, uh, the Greeks that called Ramesses. Okay. And uh, the Nubian name was Ramusa. Ramusa, how, how are you spelling that? Is that... Just like how you spell Moses, but they put Ramosis in the, in the Greeks. Right. So uh, the Africans... What, what, does it, what, what does your name mean? Did you choose that name yourself? Musa is born. So Ra, Musa, yeah. born of Ra. Okay. Because I okay. thought Musa was an uh, Arabic equivalent for Moses. Well, I got this name from uh, one of the ancient kings, uh, Asamaat Ra, Setepen Ra, okay. Ra Musa. So Ra did, did you just chose the name or what? Yeah, I how? chose it out of his name. You chose it out of his name? From where? This one of the Ramesses. He was a pharaoh in ancient Egypt. And okay. that was his name. So, yeah, so what was what was Musa's name in, in ancient Egypt? I'm surprised that you're using Ra from from Egypt, mm -hmm. and then Musa is from Christianity or from well from, from Arabic. I won't go with the ancient uh, Greeks because they say Ramosis. I won't go with that. Right, that's what I'm saying to you. So, who who was he really, Moses? Uh, a part of the Jewish. Because I'm saying you say you're not going with the Greeks. So who is Mo who is Moses? He was a pharaoh of ancient Egypt. Which pharaoh? They called him Ramesses. <laughs> <laughs> they they called him Ramesses. Yeah, the Greeks call him Ramesses, but his Egyptian name, if you call him an African name, yeah, would be Musa. Ram Musa. No, that's what I'm saying. It's not Musa. Musa, Musa is Arabic. Like Moshe is Hebrew. Musa is Arabic. Okay. So, uh, how would you pronounce Musa in ancient Egyptian? That's what I'm saying. That your it's your name. So you've chosen the name, mm. and I'm trying to find out how you chose the name. What does it mean? And you're telling me it's a pharaoh in Egypt. Mm. And I'm asking which pharaoh? Well, you've got all the names. Right. Like Ursa, Mahat, Ra, is that No, nah, that's... that's is that same? It, it's Thotmus. That's who it is. Thotmus. Thotmus. Tahutimus. That's where they got the word Tahutimus. Because Mos, they say, use, it, it means to be drawn of water. Mose, which became Moshe, which became Musa which became Moses, you see? And the reason is Thotmus is because the first name Thoth is from Tahuti. Mm -hmm. And Tahuti was teaching him. He was a student of Tahuti. This is why the name became Thahutimus or Thotmus. And like I said, then it became Moshe, then it became Musa, Moses in English. But it's Thotmus. That's who it is. So you say Ramos then? No, Ra, that's what I'm saying. Mm. When you were a student of someone, yeah, so that's I said, Thotmus, Tahutimus, because he was a student of Tahuti, because Tahuti was the great teacher and scribe. So when you're saying Ramosis, you're saying Ra, yeah, because like I said, Ramosis, as you can hear, Ramesis. Became because it's again the S mess is the Moses 
which was a student of Tahuti, who was a student who was a part of the order of Ra. That's why you say Ramesses, Ramosis. That's what you're really saying. Like Tahuti, Tahutimus, which is, yeah. So tell me about your journey, like, um, in terms of your spirituality, like, how did you well, start? What was your journey? How, did, how, how did you end up to be? I've been around the clock, so to speak. Christian, Anglican, uh, even had to look into Muslims down Jewish roads. Okay. And, and then I came up with the pyramids. I wanted to know how that was built. Mm. Then I found out that there was a whole spirituality behind it. And that's what I've been following since then. What do you mean, been following? Researching. Yeah, what are you researching? Because well, when you said that's what I've been following since, um, I don't know what People you... behind the Egyptian... Oh, so you're following Egyptology, basically. You're studying Egyptology. Egyptology is not the word I would use. Okay, so I like that coming from a European perspective. Okay, so what what language would you use then, if because if you're saying it's coming from a European perspective, mm. what's the replacement? Mm, I'm seeing that it's coming from Kemet. Yeah, but that's a European word. Kemet is a Canadian word. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like I would say, because Kemet comes from from Ham. Or they say Ham, Kemet, Ham. That's that's where it became Kemet. Okay, I'll or, say. or the word Kemet in the it, where's the origins? Where did you first come across that word? Kemet. Mm. Into researching ancient Egypt, it came up with lots of videos, lots of people talking about it. Right. Different professors like yourself. <laughs> I'm not a professor. Well, but most, most of it was again, this one you didn't answer my question though. Because if you're saying you're not going to use European words, mm. what language are you going to use then? Because well, I'll begin with Hetka Pata. Okay, where does what language is that? It's an ancient Egyptian language, it's an ancient Egyptian language. Yeah. Which one comes out of the hieroglyphs? Okay, so what is what's the language though? What's the name? So of okay, it? so when you say, what did you say, Heka? Het Ka, yeah. house of the Ka of Patah. Okay, what what does that mean? That's always broken down. Yeah, but what does it mean? Because you're saying words, yeah. but I'm asking you. You say it's a language, and I'm saying what does it mean? Then explain it to me. House of the Ka of Patah. That's English. A, it's a or for a tribe of a ancient tribe of Patar. Okay, who's Patar? <laughs> no, because it's interesting. You're using words, and we we like to get to the bottom of things to break yeah. it down. So who's Patar? He's an ancient uh, deity, ancient uh, part of uh, Africa. Okay, he was like the first. Um, you would call it spirituality, his first uh, tribe that came out of that part of Africa, and then that was his house. Which which part of Africa? Which house? Right there, in Egypt. Yeah, but Egypt's a, it's quite a big place. Now, the Egyptian word, yeah. they, they had a... Ka, the what's, what, what's Ka? Because you said... The, the Greeks Ka. got his name mixed up. Yeah, got whose name mixed up? Pata. Okay, and then the Het Kapata, they call it uh, Egyptos or something like that, and that they end up in Egypt. Right. So they're trying to translate it, but that name was not the name that was spoken in ancient times. Okay. Egypt. That's, right. That's nothing to do with See, this. A lot of people talk and use terms and words, um, but they don't explain it. I don't really explain it. We explain it. That's why we have books that explain who these people are. 
and when we say pata, yeah, which is the god that is referred to as pata is the opener. Yeah, the opener, the first, the one who paved the way for everything. You see, so it seems like you should really be trying to study Wusabat. Wusabat gives you the clarity and the answers. I've learned a lot from Wusabat. Okay. And lots of good documentations I've read. And most of it have given me a perspective. I, I know because you've been coming to our classes for about 20 years. And the question is, why are you still on the outside? As opposed to being on the inside, because something keeps bringing you back here. Something keeps driving you to come to our classes. But you've been coming to classes for 20 years. At some point, you have to make a decision so you can get the clear guidance from the master teacher, partner Babianun, who is known as Amanubi Rak Pata. No, I think I'm and you, you were asking about Kafri as well. Um, All right, can you explain uh, what's the significance behind Kapara or Kapri as you call him? Kafri, Kafri. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Kafri represents, he's the one that has the beetle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the symbol that you see with the beetle head. And he, he represents the beetle because that's dealing with the rebirth, the regeneration. And when you start to, he's the one that brings in, uh, he, he's, he's representative of bringing in the new sun, the new sun, meaning a new day, the, or what people consider to be a new day, yeah? This new day we're talking about is the sun cycle, the time we're living in now, the renewal of our 24,000 year history, yeah? The rebirth of the truth because a lot of people have lost the truth because of misinformation, religions, Colonial mistranslations, colonization, colonization, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So there has to come a time where everything is renewed and this is by way of natural nature. And the first to be born again is as I said, Amunubi Reakata or Reakpata, which is Parnababyanun, Dr. Malakai Ziyo. This is why when he came on the scene, he started to break down false religions, wrong information, and giving everyone the original teachings as they were supposed to be without being messed about. And so everyone he came across that was around, he studied and asked them questions to see if they knew what they were talking about. And a lot of the times they could only go so far and could not answer the question properly because a lot of the teachers that taught, especially the African or the black population were not linguists. So they can't break down the, the words and the information. Whereas he can speak over 19 languages and was able to give everybody back their book in its pristine order. So so he put out the origin, you know, the Quran, the um the Torah, the um the Mori Science Temple, um Quran Circle Seven. Um he, he put out pretty much every lessons were renewed and then he went about putting out a new scripture called the Holy Tablets, and then continue to give us what we call the hereafter doctrine, Partaruk, Master Secret, actual facts, so that he can help people upgrade, you know, to be to be ready to transform themselves from inside outwards to be that supreme being that you're really supposed to be. So Kafre represents that that new cycle, that new coming. Because if you, if you study what beetles do, 
they roll the dung or they push the dung. And, and, and if you know about dung, that's dealing with manure. And manure is the basis of growth, of how things are grown. So everything is supposed to be a part of a chain um, of creation. So the manure grows things, other things then eat those things that are grown. They then produce manure. And it's the cycle, and this is what the beetle does. The scarab, it, it rolls the dung, as they put it. But that's symbolic of pushing the sun, yeah, which represents when you say the sun, you're looking at, um, you're looking at, it's a symbolic story, it's allegorical, but it's also an actual fact where we're talking about this sun cycle that's coming in. So if you know the, the movement of what people call the sun, even though we know the sun doesn't move, it's the planet that's moving around the sun. So we go from what they call Anun, which is the the sea or the waters, yeah? They say the primordial waters where Atum comes out of the water. Mm -hmm. This is why the, the Egyptian story of rebirth or birth starts up with them saying that uh, Atum took himself in hand and and then from that gushed forth life but they tell you that it was some, you, have you heard of um the term the the golden the goose that laid the golden egg right because when you're looking at that it's dealing with how a goose laying an egg or like how people are born so a woman will lay an egg but because you're coming out of the waters, yeah? So a reptilian um, being will be in water, coming out of the water onto land, where we'll say atom. And then you move to that center point where they refer to as atun, and then you go down right to what they say amun. And that's the cycle of how the sun moves. But when that sun is coming back out, yeah? The, this is all the order of Re, because Re represents that sun, known as Re. Okay, so when you say Atum, you're saying Atum Re, or Atun Re, or Amun Re, Anun Re, because these are all, yeah, deities of of Re, or or birth from Re. You follow? Mm -hmm. So so that's representing this period in time from the year two thousand when this new cycle, the new sun cycle came in and you had to have someone to bring that in and renew our history and our story. And that was Patar by way of Dr. Malachi Ziyo being Amanubi Raya Patar. So the beetle is pushing the sun of the earth. What's he pushing? That, that, yeah, what's that's what I'm saying. It's symbolically bringing in that new cycle, the sun. It's pushing the sun. Yeah. Because when you look at Cathre, yeah, you look at the, um, the Orion star constellation, you see the three suns, don't you? The belt of Orion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Cathre is represented by one of those, those three suns. Okay. Because you've got Mintaka, yeah, mm -hmm. and then um, Cathray is one, one of them. Mm, the reason why is it's in uh, Tutankhamun's first name, Nephepura, then it is Tutankhamun. What's so, is it? Nephepura is in one cartouche, or, or cartouche is... Uh, I'm, I'm saying, is that... There's two cartouches for his name. For whose name? Tutankhamun. Yeah, but the first card which is Nephepura. You're saying Tutankhamun, like, but that's that's again a triad being Tut Ankh and Amun. See, Tut Ankh Amun. Even though people say Tutankhamun, they just say it like that. They don't really know that it's a it's a three part word Tut Ankh and Amun. Mm -hmm. And who is um, who are these people? Mm -hmm. And what does it represent? Because you know who Tuhuti is. Okay, that's Tut. Right. And Ankh? That would be a question for you. Yeah. And Amun is uh, one of the... I just told you that. I, I just told you. Yeah. <laughs> Amun is is the first 
what what people are calling okay, what people are calling the return of Christ, yeah, they're really talking about in our because everyone has their what they're referring to as Christ or or the the Messiah or the Messiah or the anointed. And in our um ancient Egyptian stories, that would be a moon. Because as a moon, as I said, is the hidden one. The name is hidden. And when you say, as you said, Tahuti is that being that is the most knowledgeable, the writer of this knowledge and this information. So Amun uh, is coming from this bloodline. That's why his name is in his Yeah, name. Amun Amun, I just gave you the three mm-hmm. in terms of the Thotmos, uh, Tahuti. That's the same name, though. Tahuti, Thotmos, Thoth is the same. So that's the bloodline. Tahuti. That yeah. is in Tutankhamun. His grandfathers and his great grandfathers and his. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, is there a question in there? Because I, I don't know if you're asking. The well, the name Kepapura is there too. So, and that's the beginning of his name. So he has to be coming from that bloodline as well. Yeah, huh? they're, they're all families. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But what I'm saying is that there is a significance, and that's relating to today, this day and time, where one is coming, yeah, to resurrect and to help people um, reawaken, to renew our story and to become those supreme beings in this new cycle of this new day and time, to remember who you are as part of that bloodline, if if you are indeed activated and you want to then, you know, do the things that you're supposed to do. So that's why I asked you the question. Obviously, you've been coming to class for over 20 years. The master teacher has been putting out books and scrolls and lessons and explaining everything about everything anybody wants to know to get people to know who he is. That in this day and time, that's Wusabat. And Wusabat is here to do that, to clear up the misinformation, to bring about this new day and time we're living in for those who want to uh, okay. awake. I have a question for you. Okay. When the Africans first migrated out of Africa, were there any other species on the planet? Of course. That's why I tried to give you that whole thing about the reptilians, because when when people say reptilians, they're not realizing there's different types of reptiles, right? There is the humanoid reptile, and then there are reptiles like lizards, like crocodiles, frogs, right? Now you have to remember that this Bible starts off with a water, with a, a flood. When you read the Bible, the first thing you're reading about is a flood in Genesis, right? It talks about boho and tohu, yeah? Which is basically saying that it was just water. There was no land. And in Genesis 3, when you start to read that, it explains that um, there was a serpent, right? So if, if we're starting off with a flood, who would survive? It will only be water beings and water creatures because the flood would not affect a reptile or a reptilian, you see? So when you're reading the Bible, it's speaking in the third sense where someone is saying, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, yeah? And there was void and darkness and, you know, it was about the deep. That when you use the word deep, you're talking about water. So these reptilian beings were already here and they survived that flood. And they were giving or relaying a story about Enki terraforming or he's in a craft above the waters. See, these are the kind of things that the master teacher upon the Babylonian was able to explain. That's why when you're hearing someone saying in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, this is somebody talking about God doing things. It's just that people don't know which God you're talking about. Now people are starting to realize and know that you're talking about these Anunnaki, especially Enki, that was doing this, right? So when you say, were there people here before? Absolutely. There were different types of beings, um, you know, bees in, be, beings in the sea. This is why when the flood went subsided 
And then you're talking about this character in the garden called a serpent. A serpent is a reptilian, or people say snake, right? Because snakes are reptiles. And, but they're talking about this being that is a reptile, but he's able to speak and he's able to walk and talk. You see, so, and, and reptiles, they can shed their skin. They have um, gills. And that ties into our creation because, as I said to you, when you go into the Egyptian story of Atom coming out or the, 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 um, the spraying of the sperm, because they, when you look at tadpoles or you look at how man comes about, you're coming out of the sea called semen. The semen is what is put into the woman's ovum where they say chaotic waters because when the sperm gushes out, you're talking about 777,777,777 sperms that are gushing and rushing and having a race to get to the ovum. This is what you call the primordial waters or the chaotic waters. And then when they're in the woman's womb, the word womb, um, or shall I say the word dolphin, happens to mean womb because this is how life, our life form was brought here, was injected into the dolphins on Mars. And then those dolphins were put into the waters here where there were already other reptilians or beings already evolving in the seas and waters then came onto land. Every story, ancient story about whether it's the Dogons, um, any ancient story will talk about coming out of the water or something to do with water. Yeah, so with the Egyptian story, it talks about Atom, you know, coming out to um, germinate life. And then the, the life coming out of the waters, this is what happens when you're in your mother's stomach, you're in water. You're breathing and living in water. And then you come out when she lays the egg. Now, people don't look at a, a woman as if she's a reptile laying an egg like other reptiles, but the where you're inside the incubator that you're in it's like an egg like how chickens lay eggs it's just that it's on the inside and when that water breaks yeah then you come out the same way as when a chicken's um egg hatches and the, it breaks the chicken comes out you see but people just forget that nature that side of them because we also have the natiru or the natir, the natir singular nature within us, as you say, because we then became a part of that evolutionary process by way of, as I said, the Natharu putting their DNA, their genetics into the dolphin to germinate the water. And then we then grew and mixed in with those reptiles and then we came onto land. The Egyptian story talks about the frogs and it talks about the, um, uh, what do they call them again? The frogs and snakes, aren't they? Yeah, thank you. Frogs and snakes, and the snake is symbolic of that reptilian nature. So you have both natures within you. We are still in water. We breathe water. We we are actually in a an aquarium. The earth is more water than it is earth. We are more water than we are. We always have to have water. We have to drink water or we dehydrate. You know, we, we like going to the seaside and it's romantic to take someone to the beach. Um, we, we bathe in water every day because if you don't, if you look at yourself, you've got scales. You know, you, you, you shed because your, your skin dries and it becomes ashy if you don't cream yourself. Mm -hmm. So we are tied into that reptilian nature. But the thing is, we have the Natharu's nature as well. And most people don't realize that the... The, the reptilians that are running the planet because you've got different types of reptilians, those that can shape shift, those that can influence that nature within you to behave and act like a reptilian, which is why most people eat meat, red meat, to feed that, that reptilian nature. The aggression that you have, it comes from being a reptile, but you have to, or, or a, rep, a reptilian that needs that. Most reptilians are cold-blooded. And this goes all the way and ties into society today, where, like you said, um, when um, 
Cain killed Abel, he was driven away. And where did he go? To the land of Nod, right? Where these reptilians were already there living. This is why people can't answer the question when you say, how was Cain afraid that people are going to kill him in the land of Nod if there were no other people on the planet before that? And these people, he was able to take a wife and marry and then produce children, et cetera, et cetera. That shows you that there were other beings living here before the Adam and Eve story that you find in the Bible. Okay. And, okay, if you put it, uh, modern humans, modern humans, they call, that came out of Africa, that mm -hmm. populated apparently the whole planet. Mm -hmm. Were there other modern humans before? Those yes, came out when of you Africa? say modern humans, this is what I'm saying, like, what we call in modern, what time frame, because this is why the um, scientific world and people were like trying to figure out because the chain of existence, when you say a chain, a chain is something that has, you know, like one thing connected to another thing, connected to another thing, connected to another thing. Mm -hmm. When they're looking at the chain of life or existence, they get to a point where there's a missing link. They're like, what happened here? Because it's not going in sequence. And this is where, where you're saying modern humans come in, where you now have different races on the planet. But if there was one link and everybody came from that link, there wouldn't be the different races, you see, because we've got different blood types, different skin color, different what people call hair textures. And that's because we don't all come from the same strand, you see. And the original would be Africa. Okay, that's, that's where I'll get in. Yeah, so, so the anthropologists today will tell you about the three different root races, which would be the Homo neledi or the Homo habilis, being the Africans, which from that comes what they call the, the Javado, the Javidians or the Asians, which is the Homo florensis or the Denisovan. And then from that, you get the Basque or the, the Neanderthal or the Cro-Magnon, which would be the Europeans. This is where the missing links are because they can now see that there are three different strands and they're not all related, but everyone's genetics will come from the original, which will be the so Africans. Every, everyone yeah. on the planet yeah. could trace his ancestors all the way back to Africa. Exactly. Okay. But then, in addition to that, you have beings that have come from other places. Remember, because when we're talking about our story or evolution it doesn't just start with this planet because the planet itself comes from another planet you see and it goes back to the cosmos to where you have different origins for different extraterrestrial beings who then came here after that what we've just spoken about and took that which was already evolving and injected their dna into it to produce hybrids this is where the anunnaki's story for example comes in when Enki came in Enki, Enki and Enlil which are the sons of Anu oh, no. and they were terraforming the planet they created a being from that which was already evolving they they refer to that as a Lulu Amilu you see which, which means a primitive worker because they needed a worker to help them mine the gold which is what they originally came here for you see so they created a hybrid then you have other beings like the Pleiadians from Pleiades that came here and they did the same thing. And they produced a being that was in their image and their likeness, which would be the blonde hair, blue eye beings, you see? And then those beings evolved. And then you had other beings taking those, like the, the Jakub story. He took that, which was already here, like the Flugerod, and he created something else and people just keep creating new beings from the different hybrids but the original dna and everything always goes back to africa or what people call africa today mankind and the kind of man yeah exactly but mankind and the kind of man comes from gods and goddesses in ancient Egypt, as you just said, because they, they, the ancient Egyptians, our ancestors, they didn't refer to them. They called themselves pharaohs, called themselves gods, Amun-Ra, Osiris. I, they were gods and goddesses because they recognized that they were 
you know, the original divine beings that came by way of the Nataru. Nataru. Yeah. Which became Natiru. A lot of people use the word Natiru now or Nater, you know, N E T E R and N E T E R U. But the original tone is Nathar. Or Nataru. That's why it's important for us to learn our language, to learn our culture, to live Wusabat. Wusabat is trillions of years ahead of everything else. But it's here to put the pieces together and set the record straight. That's what the master teacher Parna Babinun is doing. He actually put out a book called Let's Set the Record Straight. Because a lot of us are lost. We don't know our true, true origins and who we really are. We accept what everyone else is trying to tell you you are. But when you start to study and then put the pieces together, you start to make it make sense. Any other questions? Uh, okay. Uh, Caucasoid. Mm -hmm. Where do you come from? If the origin is from Africa, how did he come about? When you say Caucasoid, again, you're, you're, you're the Caucasian, there are different species of Caucasians. But as we said originally, everybody comes from Africa anyway. Yeah. But as I said, you had these beings that came here, like the Pleiades, the, the Pleiadians. The being gave him his nature? Yeah, Pleiades. but no, no, they made them in their image and their likeness. Because if you know who the Pleiadians look like, they're blonde hair and blue eyes, beings with pale skin. Mm -hmm. And that's what, what I'm saying. When people are reading the Bible and reading the stories and he's saying things like, God created man in his image and his likeness, they might think that's because most people have been bamboozled to thinking that that book is the book of the beginning of God from the beginning of everything. But we know it's not. I've just proven to you that there were people living on the land before that book came along. So when he's saying God created man in his image and his likeness, which God are we talking about? Yeah. And this is where I'm saying this. You're talking about these Pleiadians that were creating a being to look like them. Blonde, blonde hair, blue eyes. That's up there right now. The Jesus Christ they have on their wall. Yeah. Is blonde hair, because, blue eyes. Because most of the Bible is talking about worshipping them. Even when you're talking about Christ and talking about the stories in the Bible about Christ, you're talking about worshipping either the Anunnaki, the Pleiadians, you know, the Yahwehans, many different beings that are passing themselves off and doing things in the Bible. And people are thinking... Everyone tries to tie it to, yeah. we all came from that one God, but there are mm. many gods, you see, mm -hmm. Elohims, etc. So it's not as simple as that. So that's where they were grafted from because the Draconians were eating the Pleiadians as food. Because again, like I was saying, we're meant to be in the, in the, um, the chain of existence in terms of we're supposed to be a food source for other animals. Remember what I was saying about the manure? Because everything eats everything and then everything is related when you look at it. But we came out of that because we were given intelligence by way of the Parnatharu. So we don't, we're not in the jungles like we were supposed to be. We're not going to be around other animals that can, like tigers, lions, and the ones that can eat us. Because we're afraid to be that. So we've taken ourselves away from that, that chain, food chain. And, but we, we still eat chickens, or, or some people still eat chickens and cows and goats. And the ones that they can overcome, they eat them. It's the same way these other beings, these reptilians, draconians, they eat humans mm -hmm. as a food source. So they were eating the Pleiadians, and the Pleiadians appealed and begged to them to say, if we can give you a substitute, eat that instead and leave us alone. And that's why they went about creating a food source. And that's how they made the Adamites. See, this is where people get confused because when you use a word like Caucasian, it's very specific to people that were bred or lived in the Caucasus mountains. Caucasus Asian, it becomes Caucasian. 
it's not specific. So these specific hybrids known as the Adamites were grafted and made by these Pleiadians in their image and in their likeness to be a food source for the reptilians so that these draconians will leave them alone. But again, when you're reading it, everyone puts themselves in the story. But those stories are not really for everyone. They're not pertaining to us as the, you know what I mean, the Musbatu or the original beings. So it's a lot of confusion in the Bible, which is why the word is Babel. Bible is, is to confuse people because many books are left out of it. So you only get what has been compiled and put together by a particular group of people. The Nicaea Council put it together and left out certain books so that you won't get the full story. And when you read it, you are confused because that's what happens in the Tower of Babel, or Babel where people were confused by the tongues being... It's all part of the colonization. Yeah. <laughs> Un until the time where we're in now, which is where the truth will come. And all of them accept that, all religious people accept when the truth comes, falsehood will perish. So things have to be made clear now for everyone. The truth has to be told. And Most of us are tied up in it though, because they have the Africans that don't want to be pulled away from this blue-eyed... Well, a lot, of them are, a lot of them are now being pulled away because everyone has to reckon with all Sabat to the point where Remember, not everybody is going to wake up at the same time. But there are many people now who are being activated by Wu Sabat and they're realizing the truth. And the truth is going to set you free, as they say, even though it literally says make you free. Because no one is coming to set you free. Because when you say someone's setting you free, it means you can't do it by yourself. Mm -hmm. But when you say the truth will make you free, which is what it really says, is that you have all the tools now. You have all the information, all the ability to be made free. But being made free is one thing. The next thing now is, okay, if you go back to the so-called slavery stories, when a slave was made free, what did they have to do after that? If you were a slave and you, I made you free, like, for example, make it simple. You go to jail. You're doing time. You're a slave in that system, right? When you're made free, because recently... There's talk about the government setting a lot of people free, right? Mm. Okay, once you're free, then what happens? Mm. You go back to jail. <laughs> you go back to jail if you <laughs> repeat the crime. But what I'm basically saying, when you're free, you have to build. You have to find somewhere to live. You have mm. to get a livelihood. You have to be able to get a job or something, don't you? So now you're free. Now what? You have to build. You have to then work with people that can help you where you come together and you work to build which it might be get a house get whatever you need so now you're free mentally now you have to unite and work together to build to build what everything and anything you need so you can live and thrive and this is where Wusabak comes in like that's why i keep asking you you can't build by yourself and stay outside and, and guess and try and it's, it's not going to work as effectively as being on the inside because it says, I will succeed as, the, as a part of the all expanding. Because we're all expanding anyway, those of us who are coming together and working, and you can join and expand, or you can try and do it by yourself. And you be easy pickings on your own. You will fail as an individual person. And a lot of people try to reinvent the will. What's the point? It's like, there's a will already, we know it's a circle and it works. You say, I'm gonna make a new will, make it into a triangle or into a square. It's not gonna work because that's been tested and tried. So a lot of our brothers and sisters, I know sometimes it's because of the fact that you've been lied to all these years you don't trust each other anymore. You don't trust when somebody's saying something and telling you this is the correct path, this is the right way, but it is. And you know that because your, your soul speaks to you. You can put it to the test. Wu Sabat is real, it's practical. Like 
put it to the test and you feel it expanding and working from inside of you. So you're confident, you know what you're talking about and nothing can come close or come and try to, you know. That's why I keep saying you've been coming to Karate for 20 years and you can't tell me. I don't think it's 20 years. No. Okay, how most, long would you say? 15. 15 years. <laughs> Even that is long enough. But what I'm saying is, surely you have not been able to... I've learned a lot. I've learned yeah. quite a bit. Right. Yeah. But there's so much more to be to, to be taught yeah, and for I've you to learn. Definitely got a basic understanding, a footing of what, uh, what the study is about, what the spirituality is about. It's not a study. It's a way of life. This is what I'm trying to say to people. It's a complete way of life. It's a culture. There's no way else that gives you your own language to break everything down clearly for you. Just the language. I haven't said anything else. But we've written books on every subject you can think about. I say we, but really, partner Babylonun. But I'm saying that if you are a part of the we, then it's yours as well. It's you know, it's yours to utilize. And what's stopping you? Really and truly. With these brothers and Kian and Leo. Yeah. Apparently and Leo went to Samaria and mm -hmm. Enki went to Egypt? Uh, no, both of them had different provinces. Again, the master teacher broke this down years ago. If you read um, scrolls like Shambhala Nagata, it goes into that, it explains that they had different provinces. And yes, Enlil had seven provinces, Enki had seven, and they built. And, but again, I just said something to you and you just went right back to the Anunnaki stories. Like, what, what is it about Endul and Enki that you well, want to know about? He did go to that part of Egypt. Yeah, Lumera was one of those one of those provinces. Yeah, and Egypt, what people call Egypt today, was one of the provinces. Enki, yeah. So what I'm trying to get at is that a lot of uh, Enki's tradition stayed within ancient Egypt. No, that's what I'm saying. Uh, remember, it, it, when people say Egypt, they forget that Egypt's Africa. Egypt's in Africa, yeah? Enki went to Africa and he learned and studied and took wives from the Africans. So he, he got that information. It's all the way around. Okay. Yeah, it's the other way around. That's why when, um, you know, like, even, even a lot, of, even Nimrod, for example, yeah, because you know Nimrod's the son of Kush, yeah? he went, he went to Africa too. So when he came back to Babel, he was teaching them how to build the towers, as they say, which was really uh, a communication device because he wanted to speak directly to Anu, not Enlil and Enki, who he saw as just like himself. He was a warrior, he was a great builder, and he said, I want to speak directly to and say so he was building a communication device to speak to Anu on Nibiru, you see. So, yeah, Enki has tied into uh, Africa. Most of these beings did, because when you read Genesis, again, it talks about the Nephilim coming in and taking wives from these primitive workers or the Pataites, you see, and then mixing with them to have offspring and have children. And it explains that the serpent, right, has a seed, and the word zira is used, right, which is seed as in, you know, the sperm, the seed. And he said the serpent seed will, will um, have enmity towards the woman seed. And that's the woman we're talking about. You see, so yeah, there's a lot of mixture today with um, people on the planet, but you, you, we have the two the natures you have the animal nature as a mammal you have that reptilian nature coming out of water still being in water and you have the natharu's nature which is the one that is the agreeable side that's why we are agreeable and disagreeable or people say good and bad we have both natures within us and you have to know when the disagreeable one is trying to be slick and trick you and tell you to do all the things that it wants to feed because we have something called a reptilian brain you see and then we have the nataru who override that this is why people can't be good all the time or can't be bad all the time it's about not be it's not about being good or bad it's about 
being balanced and being in a situation where you're using your God nature, your God self, as opposed to your devil or evil nature. And then eventually you will suppress it to the point where you overcome it. And now you're living and acting and behaving like a supreme being, which is your God side or the Tharu side. And this is the science of Wu Sabat that we're here to teach those who really want to know who and what they are, not what they've accepted. And we have an actual fact called that, who and what you are, not what you have accepted. Because you can accept different teachings, different things from different people, but it's not really for you. You can't pretend to be something that you are not. Like a lot of people that are trying to find the truth and, and as I said, they get to a point where they don't know what to believe anymore because everywhere they go, it ends up not serving their purpose. You go and be a Christian, after a while you see through it because it can't sustain you. You go and be a Muslim, you do the same thing. You go and be a Hebrew or a Jew, it's the same thing because all of those religions come from Abraham, yeah? And Abraham was a part of the Sumerian because his father, yeah, who practiced Zoroastrianism, yeah, his father, Terah. So that's dealing with the Babylonian stories again, which end up back with these Anunnaki. So people get to a point, they're like, I don't know what to believe anymore. Because it's designed to get you to the point where you're lost and you don't want to trust anybody until you come across Wu Sabat. And Wu Sabat. Is that, is that truth, whether you accept it or not, because it is your choice at the end of the day, you know? Um, but yeah, Wu Sabat is the future. Wu Sabat is here to change and bring about that utopia, that world of peace and happiness. Even though they trick you in religion and say, call it Zion, but Zion ties into Zuin. You see, again, back to these reptilians. These, okay. these, these Anunnaki. I guess one last question. Yeah, sure, go ahead. In the times of building the pyramids, who do you think was the master builder? Excellent question. Again, this is where Nimrod, I just touched on Nimrod, right? Nimrod going into Egypt. He's, when you talk about building, he's known as the master builder, the builder of builders. He was the first, what they consider, mason, because a mason is someone that builds or works with stone. And, and the pyramids are built with stone, huge stones. And people are trying to work out how were they built, who built them, right? So Nimrod was considered the first builder or the first mason. And when you study masonry, you start to find out about, you know, who he is. But the, the builders were the, the people that had the knowledge of how to build such structures yeah. What a hooty. Was he in there as a builder? He's a scribe. He was one of the ones that, remember, to build something, mm. you have to first be an architect. This is why in masonry they say the grand, grand architect of the universe. Yeah. And as Tahuti, he would have had to draw and, and give the knowledge and the information mm, okay. of the plans of how you then build. That's what an architect does. They give you the plans, how this building is going to be built. And then the builders come, you have different skills. You got those who are the bricklayers, you know, you got those who cement, you know, you got, but they can't figure out how did they build these huge structures and to be so mathematically hard to figure out until this day, they're trying to figure out how did, because the intelligence came from these extraterrestrials or the, um, the Nataru, who then, who then used the workers to help. To build. We need to understand that Tahuti, he, he left Egypt and he went to Teotihuacan in uh, Mexico. Yeah, well, uh, that was really Enki who studied under Tahuti, but the, the lo lots of people took the teachings from Egypt and went in different directions, and many temples were built all around. Like you say, Tahuti is known in different cultures by different names because, yes, he taught most people and went into different directions, set up different schools of learning and taught a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So they built this, in, this pyramid in Mexico as well. Yeah, yeah, there are, there are lots of pyramids in Mexico. 
as well as in Sudan and many places. But a lot of people just talk about the plateau and you know, the, the, the Giza pyramids, but there are many pyramids that are being discovered all the time. And the science of the pyramid, we have a book called The Science of the Pyramid where the master teacher explains how the pyramids are built, what they were built for, um, and so on and so on. But some of these secrets are sacred, and this is why they only pass from mouth to ear to those who are worthy, because people are still trying to figure out how they built. Remember, the pyramids in Giza, they're aligned with the Orion star constellation, which is where these um, Natharu came from. And and when they did the opening of the mouth ceremony, for example, that was channeling that Pharaoh's soul back home to where they came from. So there are lots of mysteries that we call higher mysteries that are not taught to anybody. You had to be initiated. Hence why we have the ancient Egyptian order and other orders where you are, have to be deemed worthy and you study and you, you get initiated and certain secrets are then passed on to you. We say secrets, secrete. They're being secreted to you. Even Jesus spoke in parables according to their Bible that you cannot give the pearls, you can't throw pearls to, to, to swine. So you have to be worthy because wrong information in the wrong hands can be dangerous. Like the nuclear weapons that we're all now worrying about in the wrong hands, Certain people can push buttons that can destroy the whole planet. And that knowledge was something that, again, was really given to certain people by extraterrestrials. But you have good or disagreeable extraterrestrials as well as good ones. And it's a, it's a balancing act constantly trying to keep peace, harmony on the planet. So you have those who are for the destruction, the control of everyone. And then you have those who want to be free, live a peaceful, harmonious life with everyone. So the, the question is, which side are you on? Which which one do you want to there's a, there's a whole different story there. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, it's been a, it's been good to, um to speak to you about what you wanted to know about your questions. Mm -hmm. Um I've got, I've got... come inside. I've got the good answers and the answers that I can research as well. Of course, absolutely. That's what we encourage everyone to do. Research means what? Re, re, do again, re, -e. mm. search, do it over, connect back with yourself. Yeah? yeah? All right. Okay. Pleasure. Thank you.